the work week weather forecast. Good morning, Landon. Happy New Year. Good morning, Sabrina, and Happy New Year and Happy Day Guam. How are you all doing? All right. How about you? Good to hear that. I'm <laughs> doing good. I had a uh, pretty good vacation. I stayed here on island, as you saw a couple weeks ago when you visited my house. Um, <laughs> but I'm back to work. It's a new year, um, so I'm excited to get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And I really want to get active with the Weather Ready Nation later this year once COVID allows that to uh, proceed that we can start interacting with people, having people in our office again, and yeah. really go full force with uh, outreach and education efforts out of our office. So it's great to start a new year and I'm excited for things to come in the coming months. Yeah. Think so weather-wise, are... weather -wise, we do have a lot of action going on. I'm gonna turn my camera around, there we go. Um, we have a number of advisories that have been uh, almost permanently in place the last couple of weeks with the strong trade winds, uh, the hazardous seas and surf. And this is what we're looking at this morning. We have a high surf advisory out for north and west facing reefs, a small craft advisory, and also the ongoing beach hazard statements for uh, the man of war that continue to wash up on shore. Now, speaking about the seas and surf advisories, currently all of our forecast points across Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, and Palau are under a small craft advisory for strong winds and hazardous seas. And to put it in perspective, that's roughly the continental U.S. Our area of responsibility goes from Palau all the way to Marshall Islands, inclusive of the Mariana Islands. Now, all of our main islands, they are dealing with hazardous seas. So it's a very large area across the Western Pacific dealing with these strong winds and large seas. So more specifically, uh, what we're dealing with is that remaining residual hazardous surf along north and west facing reefs because of that large long period north swell. That's what we were dealing with uh, a couple of days ago when that uh, cold front zipped off north of us, uh, passing off of Japan and China. That stayed well into the North Pacific, but those large swell emanating from the strong winds well to our north they reached our shores and brought those hazardous surf conditions to the island. And I know you, you mentioned earlier a uh, number of rescues off of Tuman Bay, a number of paddle boarders and kayakers. Mm -hmm. That's the tricky situation because the weather outside is great. It's beautiful weather. The winds weren't that bad over the weekend, but we had these large swell coming in, these long period swell. They're beautiful to look at, very well organized with the long period swell. And people might not realize the danger with those strong currents that look just below the water surface. And that's what uh, probably caught people off guard in Tumon Bay and other locations around the island. So when we have these surf advisories out for West and North reefs, this is the West facing reefs that's inclusive of Tingisan, all the way up to Western Retidian beaches um, off of Oka Point, Arodi Point, and then on down southward towards Agate, Sela Bay, Seti Bay, and Pneumatic and then on down towards Marito. The north facing reefs are inclusive of Retidia, and that's one of the most dangerous areas where they had their beaches closed through the weekend because of that hazardous surf and the strong currents up there. Also Tangisan, Tuman Bay, all the way around to Hilton, Ipau, uh, Pacific Star, Fiesta beaches, and then along Aganya Bay, and then all the way towards Apple Harbor. So these were the, uh, the hot zones over the weekend. We're gonna see the surf gradually diminish uh, through the day, uh, the current forecast does have surf advisories um, decreasing below hazardous levels around 8 o'clock this morning. I suspect uh, the west surf advisory, that should be able to drop as planned, but I think the north reefs could still remain hazardous today because of that direction of those large swell that's swept around from the northwest now to the north-northeast. So the west is a little bit better protected and lesser surf, but the north will still be facing with a lot of stuff. This is that surf. There's large swell that came in over Friday night and Saturday. That came way in and very large, up to about 13 feet maximum uh, swell height. It's been leveling out and it's going to continue to taper, but our sea conditions of around 8 to 10 foot combined seas, that will persist another couple days. So seas will remain hazardous, but the surf will gradually diminish with a high risk of rip current still along north and east facing reefs the next couple of days. So do look out for that. I'm going to come over to the radar now. And as you see, 
the winds are large and in charge. Uh, we do have that butterfly effect still in our radar. And that's from the sea spray uh, sweeping up into the radar beam from the stronger winds at sea. Uh, we're looking at uh, fresh to strong trade winds over the open washers, uh, over the open waters uh, with wind gusts up to near gale force out in the open seas. So that's the concern for mariners out there. Rain-wise, we did have some rain about three o'clock hour. It shook and rattled my typhoon shutters this morning as it passed on through. Just some spotty showers, but the good news is these will be drying out. The current forecast may be updated for improved weather later this morning as these showers move on to the west. And this is our infrared satellite. Certainly not much going on out there. This is the stuff that pushed through about three o'clock this morning. Drier weather out to our east. And you notice the clouds are all white and gray in this imagery. That means it's all low level moisture. So no threat of thunderstorms or lightning or heavy, heavy downpours. So that's the good news. It's just spotty trade wind showers. And that's going to be the theme for the week to come. So once these showers push off this morning, it's going to be drier. I was talking to Mayor Hoffman. He had messaged me last night. I got back to him this morning. I hope he saw that uh, with the mayor's uh, inauguration or the swearing in. That's going to be later today. It uh, looks like the forecast will be great for them if it's an outdoor event. It might be a little breezy in a passing shower, but certainly not a washout. It'll be a great event for the mayors over there. And then I'm going to flip to the water vapor. Very dry air. Other than that low level moisture that's keeping those spotty trade wind showers here at the surface, we see a lot of yellow. And that's the good news. It's going to be very dry out here. Uh, we are the dry season, so we're going to get spotty showers. But as far as these soaking rains, they're not going to be too frequent over the next couple months. And looking ahead, that's going to increase our fire danger as we move into January, February, and the March months. So I'll be talking more about that in the future. Um, I do want to hit on the winds again. This is the polar orbiting satellite showing the wind speeds at the surface. Uh, we're looking at 20 to 25 knots with gusts upwards of 30 knots on the open waters. This is what we're dealing with. And this goes all the way across the region to the dateline and then on east of the dateline. So we'll be dealing with this for a while. And this will be the scene for us in the coming months. Um, as far as a similar event like what we had over the weekend with that large north swell, uh, those cold frontal systems come off of Japan and China. They'll be passing through to our north. And from time to time, we'll get that large long period north swell and that's going to generate the hazardous surf so we'll make sure we communicate that uh, in the weeks and months to come before those large swell come over our region we could see a little bump in north swell late this weekend but not like what we had this previous weekend so real quickly again for uh this afternoon you got a call from uh, robert hoffman about the weather today for their jason that's outdoors the yeah. Inauguration. Okay. So it maybe a little bit of rain, but a lot of wind. It's, it might be a little bit breezy, but mm -hmm. the rain, not so bad. It's going to be, if there's any showers, it's going to be brief and pass right on by. So um, it's otherwise going to be breezy and mostly sunny for the midday inauguration. Okay. Sounds good. Cause we're handling the, the live stream production of that event. So <laughs> We just yeah, want to make sure you should all be fine with that. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. And so this weekend, if I want to take my son to the beach, would we be OK? You'll be fine. Uh, do check the forecast, because like I said, it could be near hazardous levels, but we don't expect the large swell and the large surf that we had this previous weekend. Uh, again, we might have a little bit of a, a long period north swell come in uh, as a weaker cold frontal system passes by well north of us Friday, Saturday, and then that swell would come in uh, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be that bad this weekend. Yeah, it seemed pretty treacherous uh, over the weekend. I was going to take my boy to the beach um, Saturday and Sunday, but each day, like Saturday, it was like we got the, the story about the, the rescue, and then Sunday there was another story about a rescue, and so I was like, yeah, you ain't going anywhere. We're just going to watch Cobra yeah, for the 10th time. Yeah, I was scanning the social media pages for any rescues, and that's always my biggest fear when that happens. And that's what motivated me back in 2017 when some paddlers uh, headed out of the Ganya boat basin and they capsized right there in the inlet. Um, that motivated me to really start a focus on the social science and the communications aspect of how we operate here in the region 
and how we can better communicate because um, to some extent, I take that personal when incidents happen with water rescues and stuff. And thank God over the weekend, everybody survived yes. um, from what I'm told. So that's the good news. Mm-hmm. And even um, on the eastern side with all the jellyfish, have you seen all those pictures? My yeah, I goodness. see a lot of the photos from Jeff's Pirates Cove, and he's been an avid supporter of our operations and given us information, especially what he's seeing on his side. So that information is very useful to us so we can then communicate and put out the proper hazards. So these jellies, they'll continue probably as long as the tree winds are howling across the region. Uh, that's a typical thing for this time of the year. So do watch out if you're on the east side. I know some people like to hike on the, the jungles of the east and then go out to these exposed beaches. And that could be a hazard over there. Yeah, and it's terrible when you look at those pictures. It's like thousands of <laughs> jellyfish. Yeah, the first time I saw one, I was in Kwajalein, where I was stationed before coming to Guam, and I didn't know what it was. Uh, they should have had that in some of the Welcome to Kwajalein training. Um, <laughs> and I saw it, I'm like, oh, what's this little bubble? I picked it up, and I'm like, it's so cool, and you just pop it. And I thought it was trash or something. And then somebody said, oh, there's jellyfish all over the beaches. And I'm like, oh, really? How big? And they said, it was little small ones, it's like bubbles. I'm like, oh, crap, I just picked that up. <laughs> so... You got to be careful. Um, they're fun to walk on. They're fun to pop, but I, I wouldn't recommend it, yeah, <laughs> especially if you're both. We have a breaking story. That would be a PETA on line one. That would be PETA for you on line one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Landon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. Happy New Year. And as far as the sports, I know you were talking about the sports mm-hmm. earlier. Oh, boy. Um, you know, I always like to keep it in the Carolinas, unless, it, uh, unless we're battling University of North Carolina. Um, they can uh, go down the drain, but <laughs> otherwise, I'll, if it comes to any other out-of-state team, I really like to keep the successes in the Carolinas, even if it means University of. Um, <laughs> so I can live with that, but it looks like NC State did lose a bowl game, um, which is unfortunate. That's my team, but it brings back memories of being in the marching band years ago. Uh, my brother and I, we traveled to the Orange Bowl, the Gator Bowl. Um, it was Those were some great years, a lot of fun, and that was really when we traveled, so. <laughs> oh. I know there was a Cotton Bowl, wasn't it this weekend, Chase? Yep. Yeah. Wonder okay. Who won that. I remember one year, the University of North Carolina, they went to the toilet bowl. They didn't ah. do so well. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, Landon. Sorry, Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you uh, next right. week. See y'all next week. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to have more on the link after the break. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience.